is not an easy thing to do because um, I think that I had some unique aspects of my game uh, that that was created due to my my youth. Um, I have played when I came in the first team of Ajax in every single position on the pitch besides the left back and goalkeeper. I did that for a few years where I was playing in many positions because I was 16 when I started. So I, you know, I was fit most of the times when there was an injury, I would jump in and play in any role. But that have given my a, a capacity to adapt um, during the game in any place where I would be in the pitch to understand what was needed. Because when you play in certain roles, you understand what is needed in that position. And that is a privilege I've had to 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 gain all of that experience. So I, and then and then I have a, a mindset of a number ten, an attacking midfielder, a striker, because that, that's what I was when I was a kid. And so that attacking, that creative part of me, has always been hundred percent present during the matches. But I also had a duty to defend, obviously, because. I was a midfielder. So I had the capacity when we had the ball to be completely in my creative mode. And creative serving the strikers, which was one of my biggest pleasures. Scoring goals myself, obviously, sometimes, but mainly uh, serving my, my, my colleagues. But then when we didn't have the ball, was to be that added value for the midfielders and the defenders, uh, knowing how to position myself <clears throat> defensively. And then also in the one against one defensively, I was not really easy to pass by because I understood I played as a defender as well. So seeing myself as a very complete football player, not even just midfielder, just a complete full of the understanding of, of every part of the pitch made me um, uh, very, very, uh, I called it, I, I could just be used in different <clears throat> positions of the match. And it was a good thing for the coaches. It was a little bit less for me <laughs> because I, I only later in my career started to play in the positions that I really love to play. Um, so my focus was always, okay, the, the coach asked me to, to play left on the midfield, right on the midfield, central midfield. I would do it. The team, this is what the team needs. So um, I would then go in that, you know, um, capacity of what I learned when I was younger and just adapt simply. This is one part of the tactical aspect of my game. The other part is the creative part, which I, I, I love to talk about the creative part. You know, when you are a risk taker, you know that you're looking for real, real uh, worth. And, and that means that you take the risk because you see something that may others don't understand, but you have to try because you know you have the quality to make that pass happen or to make that shot happen. So, I was a player that 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 uh, was I was a risk taker, and and um, um, it worked out pretty well in my career. At the end of the day, the balance is positive. <laughs> and and the other thing is also the support. I was a player that would support my my teammates, especially when they were in a difficulty. I would ask the ball. I would go and support them. I wouldn't care where I was uh, if I had you know to to then get my um, um, a struggle to get out of a difficult situation, but I was always available for my teammates to pass the ball to me um, to make sure that I'm in that support mentally as well. This is a little bit in a nutshell, um, my characteristics. And uh, if you would close your eyes, we would say that I could be like a spider in a web that, that has everything under control and that um, when needed would, would, would def defend, when needed would attack, and when needed would also just play the role in the web. <laughs> my, answer, my answer will be um, that 
due to the many matches I played, it would be so hard for me to pick one. Because um, in, in most of the years that we that have been highly competitive in the Champions League and in the, in the leagues, there are so many of those moments where you can say, wow, this was, you know, this was an incredible performance. But I have to go back to my first match on the European stage with Ajax, where I was, you know, thrown in by Luz van Gaal. Um, as a youngster, I think I was uh, 16 still. And uh, against the Victoria Guimaraes as a right back. And uh, yeah, as a right back, completely out of row. But I had to do it. And I had all the responsibility. It was a match that was still on, on. It was a real game. And for me, if I look back, because after 10 years, after 15 years, after even eight years, you have some kind of experience, right? So you can cope with certain things that you know about. But I didn't know nothing about what it means to play at that level at that point. Um, and the way I cope with that match and that position and everything, I, I'm really proud of that if I look back. Because I know how difficult it is. Because I've seen over the years coming, you know, youngsters playing, coming in and completely, you know, get lost due to the pressure, due to the, the things they don't know, due to the fact that all of a sudden they're playing now with their idols and the, all of those things that influence your, can influence your game. And also the pressure that you want to, uh, you know, you want to perform so well because you want to impress the coach. And the only thing that can help you, can save you, is the balance. To have, you know, the right tension, the right focus, the right uh, um, relaxation in your body, etc., and that's what I saw in that match and uh, when I look back. So I have to pick that one. <laughs> Even there, you know, we were with a very young team. I uh, was with many of my, my youth friends there and, and, and we just won the Champions League. And for us, it was like, OK, we won a Champions League. It's normal. We were very good. So what's the, what's the you know, what's all the fuss about? The, the, I can tell that the most emotional part was not even the trophy, but was winning it with my idol, Frank Rijkaard. So that, that was very, very uh, present in, in my whole experience of that day. I can even remember one moment with Luz van Gaal uh, in the celebration or with some of my other... Uh, it, Frank Rijkaard was, was the focus. We did a, an interview together at a certain point after the match. And uh, that was like, you know, you're living a dream. Um, and uh, yeah, after a few years, you go to Real Madrid and you win the second one. And that's when I actually understood the importance because the, the celebration obviously that we had in Amsterdam as well was amazing. And, but it was our city. I grew up there. I, you know, it was, it was part of what we have lived in a certain way. Uh, when you were younger, you win, a, you win a tournament and you come back and, you know, you have this incredible celebration among your friends. So you're still among your friends. But the, I became more aware of the importance uh, later. You know, I've, I've really been privileged uh, to live certain, certain emotions uh, because when you you know, you come from, from Amsterdam and you play your second final in Amsterdam against Juventus with Real Madrid. That obviously brings a special, you know, uh, experience with it. Uh, friends, family in, in Holland. Um, then then with, with AC Milan, uh, the Liverpool match that we lost. But what a match. We really were amazing in that final. I mean, that was the best Milan probably that we have seen in the finals. Uh, but then you lose it. <laughs> so sometimes it's better to not play so good and, and, and bring it home. But um, uh, there are a few matches. I think that, that um, the Manchester United match in, in uh, Milan after losing with that Manchester United, which was a really, really amazing team was not an easy thing to do to say you're going to win 3-0 uh, 
at home uh, and, and, and keeping the zero, yeah, and not having them creating too many chances, actually. Because Manchester United is, was famous to always be scoring the goals at home or outside. So um, we have considered that we, talking about the city and the people and everybody, considered that the perfect match. Uh, tactically, it was perfect. Uh, the, the moments that we scored the goals was perfect, and um, yeah, the way the team performed was perfect. And then, you know, there are so many matches, uh, Romper, that, that what it's 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 a pity not to be able to choose more. Um, but it was such a important year uh, for us to to get to that stage. Of, um, of the Champions League after a very difficult season, that I, I will pick that one. Yeah, I, I think I had a season, uh, a few seasons, uh, 2005, for example, 2006, 2006, 2006, 2007. Those were years where you feel that there was like a certain flow going on, um, that, uh, that you were unstoppable. And, and I have actually continued to feel that over the years, but uh, you cannot do that alone. The team has to be performing as well. Um, I don't believe in that one-man show, um, I, and, and it has never been. Uh, you can have a good moment and you can determine matches, but to continue to have it over time, that has so much to do with your teammates and, and, and the performance of the team. and. Uh, yeah, but those years is when I really started to feel that all my talent is being consolidated in a conscious way uh, and that um, that I could pick my performance as I wish. So uh, when I had to uh, get to a high level of my game, I could do that as I wished because I knew where I need when I needed to go and grab what which tool and which you know, quality of myself to 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 add the value for the team to win the matches. Well, Kaká was more a striker than uh, so. I had a very special uh, relationship with Kaká in those years that we 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 uh, two thousand six seven. Um, those years we had an amazing connection. I was also playing more up front those years. But as midfielder uh, that I consider real midfielders, I have to pick two. Because those were the two that I had an uh, amazing connection with was Redondo at Real Madrid and Pirlo in AC Milan. These were the two that I've spent more time with on the pitch as a couple. Um, so yeah, those are two amazing uh, midfielders that I uh, had a great connection with and we completed each other in, in the game. Uh, so it was a great pleasure to have uh, spent time with them on the pitch and off the pitch as well. <laughs> the one that I've played with that stood out, I, I always have to say that uh, that Ronaldo phenomenon for me was, uh, you know, the most amazing player that I've uh, played with um, and against. Uh, yeah, I have to, uh, I have to continue to pick him. <laughs> well, then, then we keep ourselves with with Ronaldo phenomenon, and that was his progression. Um, and then the capacity to maintain control when you were about to execute, you know, the, 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 the finishing. Um, but his speed in progression, that was, yeah, if I would have had that, uh, then, then because I had speed on shorter distance. I was very agile, very, uh, uh, very fast. Um, but if it become longer than 30 meters, then I didn't have the same acceleration capacity as, as for example, Ronaldo. 
uh, had, and that was uh, yeah, that was one of his amazing qualities, obviously, besides all, all else. Um, you're gonna laugh about this answer. I, I many times didn't even know who I was playing against. If it wasn't really for for uh, you know the Champions League matches and, and important matches, with all the respects for the player, but I've never focused on the adversary. But I do have a few players, especially one that I, I never liked to play against because he was so hard. Uh, Turam, Turam, Turam would touch you with his finger and would hurt you. So I. I, I would. I just didn't like to be around him. And and in those times, I was playing left left on the midfield, and he was right back. So I had to come in his space many times. And uh, believe me, I tried to avoid that uh, as much as I could. But obviously, you can't. So, and uh, but but overall, I've always enjoyed uh, playing against anybody. Um, I've always tried to win. My psychological match, my the mental fight and the physical fight and the technical fight uh, in, a, in a sportive way. Um, and I've always respected my adversaries overall. But uh, really, my focus has never really been on my adversaries. And that's why also I, I don't think I could even have that type of feeling for any anyone. And my game was to play as much as possible in the free spaces. So, so... Uh, yeah, and that's probably also why I cannot. I, I'm sure if we ask Gattuso, he will have a, a bunch of players that he will say that I didn't like. <laughs> or or Edgar Davids, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> look, um, when I look at the the midfielders that uh, the attacking midfielders that are playing, uh, Ozzy De Bruyne is one who I've always uh, liked to, to see playing because of his way of thinking. Um, physically, we're not the same, but his way of thinking is very similar. When I see him making the choices of the passes that, that he's making, and uh, yeah, I like him very much. I like him very much. I think he's an excellent champion. This is one of the toughest one, actually, but um, I think that I think that uh, there were some years where um, Didier Drogba and I would meet every now and then, and you know he said you should we you should come to Chelsea, and I said you should come to Milan, and uh, and it never happened, obviously, because I think uh, he he would have you know been a perfect striker for me to to serve, and uh, and then he also was the type of striker who would you know. Surface midfielders make the runs, give the assists sometimes, and uh, uh, yeah, I would say uh, Drogba. Uh, there are many others, but uh, uh, we had the conversation, so I'm going to use that one. You know, you need to continue to to try to in, uh, engage in the things that you you like and that you. Uh, uh, you get energy from, um, you know, I have a very clear mission in my life and I have many interests, fortunately, that keep me busy. But I think the, the shift from playing to coaching and to also do other things in life is really, uh, that, that has been with me all my career, is that I feel uh, free from, I, I don't feel that I, I belong to football and, and, and football belongs to me, whatever, how we want to phrase it, but Football is part of my life. It's not my life because we have, you know, seen that life is much more important. And uh, unfortunately, we we yesterday had another loss of a, you know, an icon of football, and it just makes us understand that we need to do the things that we like and that we that you know that makes uh, us feel happy. And um, and that's what I'm doing. Um, we don't have the time to go through all the things that I'm doing, but soon, soon we will be able to talk more about that. It's definitely in line, I also think, because in the last year, you know, my rhythm of doing my sport has not been exactly what I was used to do. Uh, I maintain myself, I continue to do my sports, uh, obviously, but I also think that 
it's a, it's a balance again. It's, it's how we uh, uh, keep ourselves fit physically, how we keep ourselves fit mentally, and and how we are in life with others as well. Um, because you know, um, uh, when you are able to uh, know your purpose in life, things become so much more pleasurable and also clear in 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 the choices you eventually have to make. And I think that is also something that that helps me. Uh, due to my purpose in life that I can make choices that I'm happy with and that I can, you know, fully go for and um, and yeah, and be good, be try to good and be a good and good person and uh, learn, make mistakes, learn, fall, stand up again, you know, it's all part of it. <laughs> it's what we have been doing on the pitch as well. <laughs>